Okay, everybody, that crashed. Um, this is an early access game that's really quite intricate. Um, I'm doing the uh, tutorial because I forgot everything that I learned. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, yeah, the dev uh, became sick and he just stopped uh, working on it. Uh, so, anyway. Hope it doesn't crash this time. Okay, there we go. You can also go back to the previous message using Q. Look around, gotcha. To your left and right are doorways that lead to the adjoining rooms, which. There we go. Two adjoining rooms, these are not yet complete and are inaccessible at this time. Well, that's not entirely true because I was able to access it not too long ago. Tutorials will see old. By default, you can float around using typical AWASD. I gotcha. Okay, by default, the left control will move you down, left shift moves you up. Always move relative to where you're looking. Gotcha. The small dot in your view is your lookout point. Gotcha. You can use the item you're looking at with use item command, left mouse button. Gotcha. Move to the pilot seat and hover the look look at over sit down when you're ready gotcha it's always a good idea to, to safe the seat okay when you're in it this will lower the restraint and keep you secure during maneuvering the button on the left overhead and the CS CSSM panel how do I view how do I view like zoom is there a way to zoom? Okay, there's got to be a way to zoom. It's a middle mouse button. I don't know if I like that. Anyway, it'd be nice if it was a toggle. Uh, depending on your settings, you may need to zoom in for a smaller text, middle mouse button, button fall. Okay, thanks for telling me that now. I appreciate it. As you can see, the ship has no windows. <clears throat> Instead, you are providing an exterior view via the viewport monitor system. Okay. To enable VMS, use the see-through multifunction display (MFD) directly in front of you. Simply look at the display's mode button and select. Okay. Um, Simply look at the display's mode button and select it. Displays. Okay, there we go. Okay, just let me just, just go back to controls. See if I can't do away with the uh, zoom in only middle mouse button. Um, zoom toggle. Okay, there we go. I was wondering about that. Sign. Override current. Okay, there we go. Save changes. Close. VMS sub mode should be selected by default. Viewport monitor VMS, okay. Fault enable VMS with the system power button near the center of the MFD. Power set disabled. Enabled. There we go. Sorry, had to cough there. 
Once warmed and active, VMF offers a large view field of view without compromising safety. HUD elements are easily projected to keep vital information directly in your line of sight. Be warned, VMS monitors can be damaged. It's possible to find yourself flying instruments only. Have a look at some of the other MFD pages using the upper and lower buttons. When ready, select navigation. That's. I just want to make sure I know exactly which one this is forward. This is port docking. This one's port dock. Uh, aft towing. Aft tow VMA. Okay, that's the one I would need to go to. Mast F. forward RMS point of view that's really MFD mode what sensors do okay can I turn that off no navigation no still that's pretty cool um, displays and we need the VMS mode. Now what is this telling me? Navigation. Okay. You'll be working with navigation and other MFD modes soon. Okay. No matter how advanced the ship is, it must have hard controls to allow the pilot to interact with critical systems in emergencies. We'll finish up this overview with a quick tour of these manual controls and systems they manage. On the right overhead is the electrics control system ECS panel. At the lower portion of ECS, you'll find battery management, BMS controls, batteries are your last source of power, keep them charged. Above that is FCM, fuel cell management portion of ECS. Fuel cells provide power through a chemical reaction between a, between a fuel and an oxidizer. The power lasts as long as the fuel reactant sources do. From time to time, fuel cells must be purged to remove contaminants. Okay, finally is ECS itself, sources of power and their output into the ECS so that it can be distributed to other systems. So do you want me to? As ECS typically has a primary and secondary system bus as well as high voltage main bus for systems that have large power needs. On the left overhead on the left overhead you'll find the life support system LSS. Communications comms. That's LSS. LSS, yeah, okay. All right, and uh, the core ship systems management C SSM, which is that right there, I suppose. LSS gives you manual control over consumable tanks, atmosphere scrubbers, and heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Ugh, this is such a heady thing. Uh, you're also providing information on the current livable atmosphere within the crew cabin. So PRI is what? Not sure. Okay. <clears throat> Above LSS is the comms panel. Its primary function is to provide ship to ship communications. It also receives localization data for use in rendezvous and docking maneuvers. While most of the system is controlled via the MFD comms page, the basic functions can be found here, including the emergency beacon. At the top, of the left overhead is the CSSM panel, which you're already briefly familiar with. Well, all you do is mention that. CSSM allows you to interact with basic ship systems such as lighting, hatches, and landing skids if the ship is so equipped. Many systems feed their data 
into CSSM for collection of monitoring by the ship's onboard intelligence SOI. Later, SOI will take on cool pilot duties to help you manage your ship by handling the more tedious functions if you'd like. That I would like. Look at the lower left console panel. Okay. This is the reacting core management RCM panel. Uh, the reacting core contains all the consumables, both volatile and inert, that the ship needs to operate. Okay. The reacting core can be ejected in case of emergency. For this reason, reason consumables for the life support system, LSS, are stored elsewhere. The temperature management system TMS panel allows the pilot to manually handle waste heat disposal and retention if needed. Heat energy is dissipated via various types of radiators, passive heat pipes, as well as the active laser cooling system. Select the exterior orbit camera, F2 by default, and see if you can see the radiators for both cooling loops in the deployed state. There are other exterior cameras too, such as the Chase Camera F3 and many static cameras you can cycle through F4. Switch back to interior view F1. The low energy nuclear reactor L, E, and R panel is next. LENRs feed the high voltage main bus providing power for all ship systems. Oh, there we go, okay. Available power. <clears throat> okay, providing power for all systems including weapons and high and other high consumption systems. Below is maneuvering and thruster system MTS panel. MTS provides thrust for an altitude and translation control as well as local orbital transfers. Whatever any of that means, I don't know. Uh, while there are many types of MTS drives, a particular one is, ma is a magnetically contained variable high output plasma drive. Although not intended for interplanetary travel, in conjunction with SAM, suspended animation, MTS can get you home when the main engine system has failed. This is the main engine system. The SV-46-2 has two electrical magnetic resonant cavity uh, MES drives installed, primarily used for inner system travel. The EMRC drive requires a good deal of power to produce variable amounts of thrust, but as long as you have sufficient power, uh, power you have delta V. God, this is for heady people. I mean, brains the size of watermelons. Next to this is the Navigation Autopilot System, or NAS panel. God, that'll come handy. The Navigation Computer allows you to calculate transfer burn data to achieve orbital trajectories to and around bodies within the local system. Meanwhile, the Autopilot provides various modes of vector matching, as well as altitude alignment, stabilization, and throttle management. It's getting dry. Oh, sorry about that, folks. The lower right console is reserved for upcoming additions, including the remote manipulator system panel, which is probably something we'll never see now. You can exit the pilot seat at any time after it's after it is unsafe. What? Oh, okay, I understand, but it, that doesn't seem to be properly. Uh, look to the CSSM panel and unsafe to seat now. Gotcha. Up here. Yeah. When your strain is raised, you are free to stand up. Try it now. R by default. Tutorial end. Complete. Continue. Okay.
I guess we exit out to number two then. Um, click the main menu. Go ahead. I guess we'll load number two. Okay. Basic maneuvering. Oh boy. Welcome back to the SV-46-2 Flying Fox. In this tutorial, we'll be showing basics of maneuvering your ship in a zero-g frictionless environment. Oh boy. It feels quite different to, f uh, to fly within an atmosphere. The primary difference being that there are no, for no, there are no forces such as drag to arrest motion. Once you apply a force to alter attitude or velocity, the effects will remain until you or autopilot apply a counter force. Got you. Uh, this is more easily demonstrated than explained. So take your seat, the pilot. Got you. Head in there. If you recall from the first tutorial, VMS has managed to MFD. Just please tell me you're going to let me know how to do that. My brain doesn't work like that. I've got to go through several things at all at once, or several times before it locks into my head. VMS has managed to do the MFD just in front of you. Yeah. This tutorial will be using the translation controls as well as pitch, roll, and yaw. You'll also be using the MTS boost throttle and trying out the MTS boost deflector. Before going any further, you may want to configure these to any controls, game pads, and joysticks. You can plan to use the flight input. Well, I do have a game pad, but it's not plugged in. Or if you'll be using the keyboard, take a look at the default keys and make sure they feel okay based on your keyboard type. Got you there, pooper. Simply press escape, select controls, and navigate ship system and flight controls. We soon will continue when done. Alright, well, let's just take a really quick look at it. Ay, ay, ay. FPS, first person, camera control, action. Exit station F. But, uh, I would suspect that it would be the same as F, uh, the first person. Um, okay, well, we'll continue. Don't worry if any time you're doing to you forget a command or need a change, simply press escape to return the control setup. Gotcha. Your ship uh, attitude is essentially which way it's facing. You can change uh, attitude directly by using the pitch, roll, and yaw flight controls. Yeah, okay. Try pitching up now. The stars in the background will move down. Your view and pitch up, assuming forward view. Alright, let's take a look at this. They're asking me to pitch. Communications, comms, battery management, flight controls. Uh, w, translate, four, aft, left, right, translate, up. Oh, God, God, you got to be kidding. Translate, down, pitch is down arrow. Holy crap. You've got to be kidding me. Son of a gun. Okay, so when it says translate, just use your translate up, translate down. MTS boost boost throttle up. 
Holy crap. Um, so it's asking me to pitch this, which is my... The pitch up is the down arrow key. Wow, okay. Try pitching up now. Good. As you can see, you can continue to rotate without slowly. Even after the controls release, I got you on that, yeah. This is Newton's first law of motion at work. Generally, that an object will remain at rest or in motion until acted by, yeah, I know. In the upper atmosphere of the planets, there is no, there is little to no drag or friction to counter the force you applied. Beyond there is none at all. Wow. You must apply the counter force. Gotcha. Do so now until your rotation ceases. There. How about that? Okay. Once the ship is fairly stable, try yawing to the right or for three seconds. Ah. down. Okay, what was the roll? Boy, this thing's touching. I'm trying to stop it here. Stop. Stop. That looks no, it's still moving actually. Finally, roll. Let's roll. Roll, 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 roll. Okay, I'm not seeing roll. Then again, it is 5.10 a.m. in the morning, so I don't even know why I'm doing this at this time in the morning. kind of got bored, I think. Um, so, okay, roll left, roll right, shift Q, shift E. Shift Q, shift E. That is such a weird, wonky way. Oh, roll right. Shit. I'm rolling left. There we go. A bit dizzy, isn't it? Okay. Yeah. Just give me a second. I got something I gotta do here. I gotta stabilize this. If you start to feel a bit uncomfortable, try focusing on something that isn't moving or shutting your eyes for a moment. Gotcha. If you were to continue to add uh, attitude input, your rotation rates would be... Yeah, I know that. Eventually, the forces would become greater than you and your ships. I know I would splatter. My head would probably explode. Fortunately, pilot reactions to accelerate forces are currently disabled. They will be introduced very soon. Now, try to counter all rotation. You have eight seconds. Five. And stop. Don't worry if you didn't manage to stop. <laughs> yeah. Okay, even if you did manage it, you probably found it somewhat tricky to know the rotation. Well, get patient with it. I play another game that's uh, very, very like this. Uh, you're going to do this again, but this time you'll have the assistance of the navigation autopilot uh, system. Go ahead, yeah, all right, without trying to counter it. Okay. Oh shit, I did a roll. Added some downward pitch. Up is down arrow. Gotcha. 
now some roll, right roll, a shift to E. I'm all over the place. Look to the left and you'll find NAS panel. Okay, uh, okay, uh, NAS itself is already enabled. No. Look to the left and you'll find the NAS panel. NAS itself is already enabled. Go ahead and set AP allow. You're going to use the attitude stabilizer. Hold down to arrest your rotations. Press roll hold. You should hear the appropriate. Well, I. Fast enough, you can switch to an exterior, external view. That's kind of dark out here, guys, and cold. Okay. Now, yeah, yeah, hold. Okay. Still pitching, but at least those, the operations are working. Now pitch, gotcha. So if I get out of hand, I can do that. Okay, good. Your ship should become complete stop now. Yeah, okay. Cancel with the last rotation forces. Once again, and this time with the holds active, pitch down. Which means it should correct itself right away anyway. These controls, your ship immediately begin to slow and then stop. Gotcha. With the holds, your ship becomes more manageable and predictable. Try maneuvering a bit to get a feel for the system. Gotcha. Let's go to F2. Let's see if we can't. Let's roll a little bit. See if you can't see any thrusters happening. Nope. What about pitch? Okay, I guess I can't. All right. As you can see, the auto play can't cheat the laws of physics. It takes just as much force to rotate. Gotcha. Learn to predict when to release the control so uh, when the auto play is finished, you'll be a desired attitude. Gotcha. A warning, NAS can be damaged during combat or malfunction due to component age or random fault. Do not rely on it to always be there. Well, I will. <laughs> Practice flying and flying manually. There will come a time during your career that you'll be glad you did. Well, right now, like I said, I'll be doing a tutorial like 20 times before anything sticks in my head. So, RCS stands for Reaction Control System. The RCS is Prize of any small thrusters located all around the ship. Yep. Pitch roll and yaw rotations are achieved by firing the proper RCS thrusters around the ship's center of mass. However, you can also move your ship with proper combination of thrusters. This is called translation. For example, if you apply thrust from the left side of the ship, this is going to be a hard word, longitudinally, <laughs> pals with the CM. Ship will translate to the right. It's possible to translate uh, longitudinally <laughs> forward now, laterally, left and right, vertically up and down. In space travel without visual aids, coming soon, these translations are near impossible to see unless you're very close to something else. Conveniently, you happen to be very near to an orbital training platform, the OBT. Camp Campana. We'll use this to demonstrate translations. Oh, terrific. The Campana should be within five kilometers of you. Look around for it. The VMS trace brackets should help you find it. Okay, well, maybe this is where... Yeah, see, I'm not going to be able to see anything anyway, because nothing's going to... There are, There is this, but what actually is that? Um, uh, 
I suspect I'm here, am I? Don't know. Um, is that it right there? No, down this way. I'm not sure, but I would suspect that if that is it. Come on, thrusters, kick in for me, please. I would suspect that's it. Um, is, uh, the VMS trace brackets. Yes, but... suspect that's it? Is it? It's not telling me. I guess we'll go with that for now. Without aiming directly at it, until she shifts at it, since you point directly at the cabana. It would be nice if there was something that would tell me otherwise. Tell me exactly what I'm looking at here. System info, not implemented yet. See, that's sad, right? I mean, I'm really s sorry that he hurt himself and he became sick. I only hope he gets better and everything, but, you know, this has, it has incredible potential to be one of the best flight, space, career games out there, and he's no longer working on it. I find that so sad. Anyway, I can't bring myself to support any more devs. Not for games, but, you know. Okay, where am I going here? Um, no, not sensors. Navigation, no, not navigation displays. Okay. I don't know how I... Awfully. That was touchy. And the amount of money that he's charging for this game is like 30 some odd bucks. Sometimes you get it on sale, but if he's no longer working on it, like, what's the point? Without aiming directly at it, just gotcha. Whenever you're, you approach another ship peacefully, do not fly directly toward it. Directly toward it. Why am I drifting? What's going on here? I should not be drifting. I'm drifting. Why am I drifting? Uh, your attitude stabler holes should be active. Your ship should be stable once aimed. Not really, I'm drifting. I don't know why. Now translate forward using whatever control you have set up for this. It's W, is it not? You short bursts, check in between each. And there's a trace bracket is decreasing. See, I don't know if that is the trace bracket, to be honest with you. I don't know if that's, that can't be the trace bracket. It's not closing. Okay, you short burst checking between each to see the range of the trace bracket. See, that's, that, this has to be incorrect. It's serious. Okay, I'm gonna go up this way to see. There we go, there's the trace bracket. Think. That's the only thing. A 
Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm not sure if this is it either. Um, okay. That is what I just pa I had. What is this? And what is this one? What is that? Um. Okay, we're gonna go left to right here. Let's see if it. Okay, is that it? Stop! 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 Mike! 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 Come on! Move forward, see if anything. Else. See if the range under the trace bracket. See that's not. Uh, that's not it. Um, this is forward, is it not? Yeah. Okay. See if the range under the trace bracket. So there, there's no trace bracket. The only, the only bracket that I've seen, if you want to call it that, okay, that is what I just had. Let's pitch here. I'm moving forward. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm accelerating here. Um, What about thrust? Is there anything to counter thrust? Uh, anything at all? Oh my god, these buttons. I mean, I have to admit, I, I, I'm always fascinated with buttons, and I don't understand why I'm fascinated by them. I've been like that ever since I was a kid. You put me in front of a panel full of buttons, and I'll, I'll be fantastic all day long. And I think that's what really, um, is there a way for me to stop forward? Well, yeah, there is, Mike. It's called counter. All right. All right, so S would be fine. Oh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm pointing back. I'm pointing my arse ends there, so I'm almost just point forward until my forward thrusts. I wish there was a way to indicate exactly what my speed is here. Alright, I'm at a loss here, guys. I should be decreasing speed. should be actually slowing because I'm, I'm accelerating right now in the opposite direction all right there's something that is, is this isn't working well at least I'm heading in that direction it appears thing is that let's just continue on here remember you have to undo whatever you've done so yeah I know that I already tried that it wasn't working gotcha and the fact of the matter is is that I don't I, I cannot find the this is the only thing that looks like a bracket to me but I'm not seeing any readings let's counter Counter my speed. I should be slowing down here. Try to get within one kilometer if you can. Can you use four and a half towards Cabana? Well, then where in the hell is Cabana? Is that? I mean, okay, that 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 would be. But it's not telling me. All right. I 
I'm obviously not heading in the right direction here. Um, oh, right. Not implemented yet. Thanks. Can I just have a name or something? I don't know, EAD ports. Damn, I keep pressing that. All right, well, um, obviously I can't be heading in the right direction because it's going to take me forever to get to wherever I'm go trying to get to and I can't seem to find out exactly where I'm heading. Um, and I cannot stop my forward thrust here. Is this a bug in the game, or is it... No, I'm still going forward. What? Alright, let, let's go to the third um, one, because uh, this is just not working out for me right at this very moment. Take a PP and I'll be right back. So hang tough, all right, folks.
Okay, I'm back. I know you're all pleased. Oh, sorry about that. I have a gum in my mouth because of my throat got really dry. The ship has been unsecured for a startup and it's currently drawing power directly from the batteries. Gotcha. Okay. Light on, seat load. Okay. To do this, you'll need to enable at least one battery. Open battery ones enable safety cover. lights. Is you clear as you enable the remainder of the ship systems. Okay. And an unexpected loss of power to a system bus can be devastating. The best safeguard against this is to tie a battery to the bus as a backup. Press bat to sys bus one. Good. On the ECS instrument panel or display, check that the back background power that is the ECS is not. Check that the background available power level bar for Sysbus One is full. I would suspect that's it right there. And maybe not. It's over here. That's the LSS. CSSM, so that has nothing to do with what I'm trying to look at here. I would suspect this would have to be it. Sysbus 1 is. So that's Sys 1, so okay, that. Also check that the small indicator next to the ECS display has changed from SIS1 What? Are you talking about? It's got to be on here, okay. Also check that the small indicator next to the ECS display has changed from SIS1 this one no power to this one change from this one no power to this one <laughs> no. <laughs> okay I, I, I'm just following your directions here during startup you can make use of external power supplied by the host station unpress external power cutoff to allow it Verify that the button indicates external power in use. Yeah, okay. And that battery one is no longer losing charge. That would be battery one is no longer losing charge. Yeah, okay, the numbers aren't moving anywhere. The SV-46-2 Flyer Fox has two batteries. Enable battery two. Select battery two using the rotary knob. And we're going to link it to SysBus 2 tier. Check the available power level for SysBus 2. There's SysBus 2. And check the available power level for SysBus 2 is full. I would suspect no. Uh, I can't suspect because it's not. 
has changed from sys2 null power to sys2. Yeah, okay, well that's on there. I would, I would have to say that's probably it. Also notice that the displayed battery charge level has changed to match the currently selected battery. What? Notice that displayed battery charge level. Okay, well there is, oh, okay, selected battery number two, gotcha, okay. Okay, I'm just going to switch back here and see what this says. Battery one, okay. Is that even charging? No. Okay. Okay, so it was drawn off of battery one, that's why. Maybe it will slowly charge, but that the charge is still going down. External power only supplies system bus one. So battery two may be losing a minimal amount of charge at this stage. Gotcha. Uh, when your LEN or LEN reactor will handle your primary power needs, the Flying Fox is equipped with two backup fuel cells. Okay. Fuel cell cores take several minutes to warm up. Minutes you won't have in an emergency. Keep them warmed up and ready. Fuel cell one should be selected. Already enable it. On this ECS display, check to make sure the core temp level begins to rise. And it is right there. Right there. Do not tie the fuel cell. Doing so could damage its core. Leaving the fuel cell untied keeps it in standby mode. While in standby, uh, standby, no consumables are used and the core is kept at a minimum safe temperature, ready for use. Now enable fuel cell 2. And check the core temperature level increase. There it is, the core is raising now. Shift systems will generate a large amount of waste heat. While the passive heat pipes can handle some of it, you'll need to get the temperature management system running for safe operation. On the left console, okay. to enable the TMS system, don't forget to close the safety cover after you do this. You can damage the coolant pumps for running them when the coolant loopy, or loop, I <laughs> loopy, oh man. Oh man, this is crazy. Loop is dry. To limit dry time, you want to re uh, you want to pressurize each loop first. Okay. On the TMS display, the tank will uh, the tank level will decrease as coolant is moved into cooling loop lines. Okay, so where is that? I should close these covers, should I not? Okay. Um, on the TMS display, which probably... Um, okay, that's the thing. Okay, hold on. Well, I should be able to zoom in closer than that. Let me just use my wheel mouse here. No, that's about the maximum. Okay. Um, God, can I have better eyes to look and see this? Uh, TMS system temp. Forgive me, I'm having a difficult time reading this. Um... coolant loop, that's for one. Okay. Also verify the coolant pressure level is increasing. Coolant loop, that's the temp. Pressure there. I'm not seeing the numbers changed. 
but it is over 100 psi so god my eyes okay you can now set the pump speed to normal the radiation balance laser cooler rblc requires high voltage power it can be operated in lower power mode uh, low power mode though when hv is not available yikes normally tms will monitor coolant and via the radiator and rblc bypasses try to maintain nominal operating temperature well it looks like things are cool right enable CR, uh, cl rblc power uh, right there now using the rotary select cooling loop too Okay, we're doing everything identical to what we did last time, it looks like. Or maybe not. Verify pump speed is low. Oops, I just did normal, didn't I? Finally, enable RBLC power and verify indication. God, the guy, the, the dev must have a brain. Well, consider a life support system, the cabin HVAC is part of TMS. Now that TMS is active, you can enable HVAC. It's located on the LSS it's up here. Yeah. Cabin HVAC. It's time to check in with station space traffic control. Okay. When docked, you have a hard line connection to the local STC. You just need to enable communication comm system. Gotcha. Enable, oh, there it is. Well, you don't need to transmit it for hardline communications. Now is a good time to enable it. Good. You can now contact S STC via the comms menu. Press tab by default to open it. Select five, space control. Now you want to check in. The comms menu will close and you will send your check-in request. It will take a moment to get a reply from STC. This is control. We have check-in over. We have you checked in. Okay. When STC replies that they have checked in, open the comms menu tab default and select space traffic control. Number five. Select option two, request departure clearance. STC will reply giving permission for your request. They will want you to contact them again before LENR initiation. Is control departure approved? Notify control before LNR initiation. Over. We need to get high voltage power up and running soon for primary systems such as MES. MTS, the TMS Radiation Balanced Laser Coolers. Lenar provides this power via, as suggested, the reaction caused by the fusing atoms, hydrogen and nickel in this case. First, enable the LEN reactor. After a moment, the system will initialize and the instrument display will become active. Gotcha. The LENR core needs to be near operating temperature for initiating reaction plus the core heater button. Verified's core temperature begins to rise. Yeah, it's rising. Right there. The LNR or LENR requires a reactant hydrogen. For this, you need to power up the reactant cooler or a cooler core. Okay. Enable RCM system power. Once the system initializes, you want to pressurize each tank. Caution. 
Do not press any of the tank. Okay, hands off the mouse. Press any of the tank ISO valve buttons. Once isolation valves are triggered, they cannot be reset from the cockpit. Hmm. Okay. Now pressurize tank one's pressure bladder. Pressure bladder two, bladder three, and bladder four. Using the tank select rotary cycle through all the tanks to verify that each is pressurizing. Where would I get? Okay, it's up top. It looks like. Yeah, I can't really zoom in that far. Good. Now you can validate source tanks for not only the L L E N R but also the fuel cells. Okay, for L E N R, press validate reactant or validate reactant. The button should now remain pressed. Looking at the bottom tape indicator, RCM tank two. Selected, and that's what I just put it to. Okay, should be selected. Depress, depress, and press validate reactant again to select RCM tank for a larger tank more suited for our use. So, should I switch that over to tank four? Verify the bottom tape indicators displayed to fill tank for tank four. Um, yeah, I know this is RCM here, but let's. All I'm seeing is, okay, there's the pressure. Verify the bottom tape indicator. What is that meant? What? What? What do you mean by that? Bottom tape indicator. That, like, what? What exactly are you meaning here? On the FCM. Portion of the ECS panel with fuse cell 2 selected. What? Validate buttons to select valid tanks. Alright, now you've lost me. Validate. Remember, fuel cells require both a fuel and an oxidizer. It will be used in tank 2, hydrogen, tank 3, oxygen. Ah, boy, I gotta do this over and over again, I'm sure of it. No, I'm actually guaranteed, it's 100% sure. Also, set purge content to auto on. So the SOI can purge the fuel cell as required. Select fuel cell 1. Validate consumables. Number 2. Very good. Now the fuel cells are set that during an emergency all you need to do is tie one or both fuel cells to one or both buses. I, I'm going to remember that. Caution. You can damage the fuel cells by allowing flow when the core temps are low. Remember to check the core temperature before tying. Okay. Uh, with the ship in a stable state, we'll go over over some more MFD and functionality functionality while waiting for the L E N R to warm. VMS sub mode should be selected by default. Enable it with system power. Okay, so let me see. Okay, VMS mode. VMS sub mode should be selected by default. Enable it with system power. Okay.
when the VS VMS monitor comes up, you can use blah blah blah. Use the left sub menu to switch to the aft towing camera. With the VMS monitor comes up, you can use the left sub menu to switch the aft towing camera to watch the up upcoming departure. Okay, well I did choose that. On the same page, select the external dock HUD mode. Uh, that would be it, right? Let me just make sure. Fingers off the keyboard, Mike. On the top row, page mode button, select EAD ports. Okay, that right there. From the left sub menu, select external port 2. The MFD will show that you're connected to GYFFEN A1 OBT and its status is connected. Okay, I'm going to take a look at this. Okay, saying connected. Okay, gotcha. God, this is such heady stuff. <clears throat> Use the set as docking target command button. Now select navigation from the upper page mode menu. The navigation, okay, the navigation autopilot system NA, NAS is disabled. Enable it to validate the MFD's display. Again, the NSA panel is on left console. Good. When NAS initializes, you'll see an overhead view of the local star system at the planetary level. You're in orbit around the third planet out. I'm right there. Okay. So in number two, that's where I was. Okay. For now, you can use this page to find a transfer from one planet or moon to another. Its functionality will be expanded over time, which is probably isn't because he's no longer looking on it. Go to the comms page. You'll be able to enter some departure frequencies soon, so you should learn to enter them now. In the left sub menu, you will see a list of comm channels. The comm system installed on your ship has four of them. Okay, channel open, channel one, two, three, and I suspect that would be all four. Channel open cannot be changed. It is auto set to the system's designated open frequency. If you need to send a transmission to an unknown ship, try using the open channel first to make contact with it. Channel one has been preset to your ship's designated private frequency. If someone wants a private conversation, you, you can use this. Channel 1 can be changed, but typically it's good practice to keep it set as is. Channel 2 and 3, then, are typically the ones you will change depending on your current needs. Try cha uh, changing the channel 2 first. <laughs> I'm not reading right here. First, click the selected as the active channel from the left submenu. It will show channel 2. Okay. Try channels to change them. First, click the selected as your active channel from the left. Okay. Now, select the large entry box on the left just above the displayed keypad. Okay. I selected it. Enter 9999. Then enter all nines in the other two fields.
good. As you can see, the frequency you just entered was set to channel 2. Gotcha. If you want, you can change just one field and use the current values in the other. Again, select the leftmost field and enter 3C3. If you want to set a frequency to be used as a localizer, usually for docking, select it and press the set lock button. Do you want me to do that or are you just telling me? Okay, no, it's telling me to press it. Or no, it isn't. Select it and press, okay, it is telling me to do that, okay. Select lock. Also, notice your communications log on the right. Okay. Every incoming and outgoing transmission is recorded here for reference. Good. Leave the MFD with the comms page up. By now, the LENR's core should be at or near minimum reaction. Temperature with the core heater having toggled the auto on. Yeah. And that's what we've been hearing all this time. Okay. Inform STC that you're ready to initiate an LENR reaction. Press tab. Again, you want five. Now select one, ready for LENR initiation. Control, this is 27, request the LENR reaction over. Control, copy or clear to initiate LENR. Notify control and ready for departure over. When SCC responds, granting permission, press fuse allow to initiate the re reaction. Okay, the display will indicate fuse. Keep your finger off your mouse, Mike. And the output will increase as the core temperature climbs to normal operating range. On the ECS instrument display, verify main is showing available power. Full. I'm just trying to make sure. Um, battery 2 looks like it's dead. Um, okay. Also, next to the display, verify that main no power has changed the main. suspect that's it. I'm not seeing main no power. Main to util bus. Main assist bus. Main assist bus 2. Also next to display verify that main no power has changed to main. Two has absolutely nothing. But anyway, we'll continue on. You can now tie the main bus to both system buses, as well as utility bus. All right. Main bus system one it should indicate tied. Main bus two.
At this point, you can come off external power. Press external power to enable the cutoff. Also, with ample main power, the batteries can be set to recharge. Select battery to charge. Verify on the ECS display that battery 2 is charging. And it is charging. Okay. Select battery 1. Allow charge. And it is charging. Okay. You're almost ready for launch. You just need to be able to maneuver once you're free of the station. For most of your upcoming career, you'll probably be docking internally. STS or STC regulation forbids the use of MTS superheated plasma thrusters within a station for hopefully obvious reasons. Yeah, you don't want to bring anything up. In fact, STC will prevent you from igniting the MTS core in or around stations. However, as you learned in the previous tutorial, well, I didn't learn much, you can configure MTS to operate in cold gas mode. I didn't get that far. At least I don't think I did. Pumping the inert gas directly out of the nozzle allows for very low, precise thrust forces, safe for use in around stations. That's not very efficient though, so use it only as needed. To configure for cold gas pr propulsion, you first need to enable the MTS system and allow it to initialize. Okay. It's, if successful, MTS has also auto-enabled all the ship nozzles. Okay, it looks like it come online. This particular MTS uses Argon as repellent. Press validate prop to allow MTS to select RCM tank 1. Once validated, enable propellant injector. On the CSSM pattern, enable the external docking lights, external floodlights, and navigation lights. You are now, with the current configura uh, configuration of implemented systems, ready for departure. Well done. Well, I can tell you right now, if you didn't direct me, I'd, I'd, I'd still be stuck here trying to figure something out. With practice, the manual startup procedure only takes a few minutes. Later, the ship's computer will speed up the process further. It's time to let STC know you're ready to go. Contact them. Select two when ready. Uh, tab. Five. Ready for departure. Ready to depart. Over. <clears throat> this is control clearance granted over. Okay, STC will pass the departure frequency, frequency as well as the localizer frequency of the external port you're about to uncouple from. Control maintenance power just uh, power disabled. Control to an ST departure on four five one three. Localizer for. Uh, I guess we'll do that. What was it? Was it asking me to do? Um, am I able to? What's going on here? I didn't set the localizer. Don't forget to use set lock. For, yeah, I know. Um, I didn't get. The, I, I, yeah, 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 yeah. Four five one three. Um, four five one three. Set lock.
Okay, am I, am I forced to use all four digits? Don't forget to use the set lock from FD. Yeah, I did. Or is it four, five? not working out right. Clear lock, set lock. All right, how come that's not changing? Don't forget to use set lock from the to keep it. Yeah, I know. But I've I have done that. To an ST departure on 4513. T departure. Oh, hold on. Oh, my look forty five one two oh two. Still not changing. ST departure on. Okay, that's just not working. Oh, this isn't working on 4513. I don't know, let's just put. Uh, yeah, I'm not getting anywhere with this. But I have noticed that do channel one maybe. Set LOC. Um Okay, so the one I'm looking for right now is external caller three using four five one two oh two. Okay, it's not changing my frequency. Invalid data. You're the one who told me that. Control clearance granted over from you. Control this and ready to depart over. You're cleared to initiate. Tune localizer for external to 45102 or 202. Maybe we should put that to set, maybe? There we go. And the localizer <clears throat> stand by to release tune your local tune localizer to yourself okay tune 4513 I don't know um let's just try that That. I don't know if I did that right or not. Invalid data. I don't know. Take your time entering for you. Again, all communities are stored in a lot. Yeah. Maybe I should swap these. Yeah, see. Okay, no, it'll only accept the 202 for the localizer.
There we go. After that, the uh, vehicles are, will be disconnected. Springwell Class will push you and your station apart. It's already done that. And I know I failed this. Um, Is that the end of the... Or maybe I should pull away? Oh shit, I'm going forward. That's my ass end I'm looking at. Aches. There we go. I stopped my forward momentum. Alright, so let's... um. Go to displays, forward, man this is really something isn't it? One of that tick, 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 to stop. Boy, this is quite complicated, isn't it? Anyway, it's 6.15 a.m. And, uh, <clears throat> listen control, you're beyond limited range, free to navigate, have a good flight out. I say thank you and have a good day. What's announced to control? This is a command over. Let's see what it does. Like this is really quite cool. It's just um, I'm gonna have to do this over and over and over again until it's, it just comes almost second nature to me. Anyway, they're not responding to me. But this is, a, again, a tutorial, so it's scripted. All right, everybody. I just want to say good night or good morning. Oh, sorry for burping. Ah, the gum did something to me. Anyway, folks, uh, thanks for sticking with me. I appreciate it. Uh, have a good Saturday. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.